Hello and welcome to this IBM Cloud Foundation Skills Series video. And in this lecture we'll provide you with um, a deeper level of knowledge on block storage. So these are the main features of block storage. So first of all it provides storage which is more akin to SAN or storage area network storage in terms of performance. So it behaves and performs a bit more like local storage. The service is built so that it's highly durable and resilient so there's no need to build RAID arrays in your operating system. Uh, to protect your data from disk failure. Um, basically it's all done for you in the back end. You get data at rest encryption built in. So if someone were to manage to uh, get access to the back end storage, it wouldn't do them much good because they would just see a load of encrypted data. Uh, like file storage, block storage comes in a couple of flavours, endurance and performance, which in turn provide either tiers of preset IOPS or you can fully customise your IOPS if you want to. And unlike file storage, there's no restriction on block storage with Windows-based servers. Provisioning and managing the block storage is pretty simple, and it's all done through the console. And I'll show you some of this in the next video. Um, essentially, once you have uh, provisioned block storage, then you have to authorize hosts to it. So it's not just a free-for-all, and uh, it's not the case that any old machine in your account can then just access it. Once you've authorized the host, you then need to mount the storage from the operating system. Now this is a little bit more involved than, uh, than a simple mount command, uh, but in the next video I'll take you through how to mount block storage onto a Linux host, um, but it, it does take a few steps. Um, by default, a block storage LUN can be mounted to eight different hosts, though this can be altered through a support ticket, and you can order up to 250 block storage volumes, but again, this can be adjusted uh, via, via a support ticket if you need more than that. Now when you create or provision your block storage, one thing uh, that you need to consider are the IOPS per gigabyte, uh, which are the uh, input-output operations per second. So when provisioning, think about how frequently your application might need to read or write to the storage and set the IOPS accordingly. Uh, the good news is, assuming that you don't configure the storage um, with the 0.25 IOPS per gigabyte option to start with, you can actually scale your IOPS up and down at a later date which is great especially if there are peak uh, workload periods for example. So as I mentioned a moment ago there are two types of block storage, uh, endurance and performance and uh, these offer different levels of IOPS. So with endurance there are four different levels of IOPS shown here and generally uh, endurance block storage is uh, mostly suitable where the requirements for IOPS are ill defined or where uh, lower IOPS are required. So with 0.25 um, IOPS per gigabyte, you would expect pretty low levels of disk activity. And note that you can't migrate up from this tier either. 2 IOPS per gigabyte is good for general workloads such as small databases and rising up to 10, gig, uh, 10 IOPS per gigabyte may well suit a larger database that is linked to a website, for example. But be aware that you can only create um, storage up to 4 gigabytes in size at this level for endurance. Performance block storage is where you have a much better idea of what IOPS are needed and where those IOPS exceed um, the levels that endurance is capable of. So with performance you're pretty much able to define the IOPS per gigabyte that you need. Uh, though this is also scaled depending on how much storage you provision and I'll show you more of that again in the next video. Now another really useful feature of block storage is snapshotting and uh, you can think of a snapshot as a copy of your volume or disk at a particular point in time and they're really handy for backups. Uh, now you can take manual snapshots or you can configure automatic scheduled snapshots on an hourly, daily or weekly basis or a mix of all four to suit your needs. Uh, note that you'll need to provision adequate space for your snapshots. Uh, the more you take, the more snapshot space you'll need. Uh, when a snapshot is taken, the state of the files are effectively frozen at that point and further updates are then incremental. So this means that snapshots don't take up as much space as the entire volume and it takes around a second to, uh, to make a snapshot regardless of the size of disk. Recovery from a snapshot is simple and done via the console, but remember that you can only recover an entire snapshot uh, and not single files. So if you think that you need to recover specific files only, uh, then you need to consider other backup and recovery options. Uh, also, if you need to, let's say you've got a database and you need a point in time recovery, uh, then you may also need to consider other backup options um, so that you can restore and then recover back to the point in time. So you may not be able to rely on snapshots in those scenarios. So you can also set up replication. Um, so uh, re replicating storage to another data center and uh, also doing duplication. So that's creating another identical volume. 
Um, and uh, but again, we'll, we'll cover that in a later video. So as I mentioned earlier, you can make changes to your block storage after provisioning. So if you find that you need more storage, then you can scale up your capacity without downtime. And this can be really useful where you want to start small and grow because, of course, you're not paying for storage that you don't need from the outset. Uh, note that you can't reduce your storage capacity, though. So if you find that you have too much storage, um, then you'll need to copy to another smaller volume and mount that, uh, which will require some downtime. So my advice is to smart small and grow. Uh, again, you can adjust the IOPS, assuming you haven't selected Endurance 0.25 IOPS per gigabyte. And again, this is great if you have peaks or if your requirements grow over time. So this is really great where you have, for example, seasonal peaks in usage. So you might find that your database uh, is running on block storage uh, and it has a much greater level of use in the month of September, for example, compared to other times of the year. Well, you can then increase your IOPS to better cope with this peak during the month. Uh, and then shrink your IOPS level back down again in, in October and for the rest of the year. So that's pretty much it for this video. It's, uh, it's pretty quick. Um, I hope it's given you a bit more insight into uh, the block storage service on IBM Cloud. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment uh, in the next video. I'll show you how to provision mount and uh, actually use block storage.